So when evaluating ISQ, what we see just kind of as a general average is we're seeing these values around 70. So that's kind of where many implants lie, right around 70 as an average and, and thereabout. And if we place an implant with a high initial ISQ, typically what we're gonna see over time as that bone remodeling progresses is a small decrease. So that's, that's within normal limits to see a decrease. But what we're looking for over time is that for that ISQ value to stabilize. So in our practice, we're actually measuring the ISQ at several time points and tracking that for each implant and each patient. So here you can see an implant that was placed with a very high initial ISQ, small decrease with bone remodeling is normal, but we want to see that stabilizing over time. And then if on the flip side, we have a patient, we place an implant and that implant has a lower ISQ, what we expect to see with that development of biological stability, that osteointegration, is to see that value increase over time and then again reach a stable level. So really what we're getting at is the trend is really important. It's not the absolute value. And we have a lot of our patients, they, they start paying attention to these numbers and you know they, they want 100, but nobody ever gets to 100. I think the highest I've seen is about 90, maybe 87. Um, but, but tracking that over time and seeing, okay, when did we place the implant? What was our stability? And what's it gonna be at about six weeks and, and so on and so forth? And really we're looking to see that measurement stabilize because not every implant's gonna get to 70, but if we have a value that stabilizes over time, we feel that that implant is, is stable and ready to, to bear the load of a restoration. On the flip side, looking at trends, something that is a big concern is to see a progressive decrease over time. And that's something we consider to be risk behavior for an implant.